we're going to take a PNG image and we're going to run it through these online programs and I'm going to show you guys which ones give the best results. We're going to compare PNG to SVG.com as well as SVG Converter. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys what it would look like if you were to download the SVG file directly from Canva. So the first thing that we want to do is grab our image. I'm actually going to slide on over to canva.com. I saw a few clip art pieces that I fell in love with and I want to show you guys how to convert those. So this is the homepage of canva.com. We're going to go on over to the top right hand side and we're going to do create a design. I'm going to go with a Facebook post. Your screen should look like this now. I'm going to go to the left hand side and go to elements and we're going to search for some cute clip art. So something that you want to consider is the amount of detail that's going into these clip art pieces. You want flat colors, solid colors, um, anything that has a lot of gradients or textures, that stuff isn't going to convert very well. So while the flower and the leaf here is absolutely gorgeous and they would make some beautiful stickers, these to convert to an SVG would be a pain in the butt. So look for ones like this flower. It's solid colors, there's no kind of gradients or shading or anything like that. Even something like this, again, there are no gradients, nothing shaded, they're just solid blocks of color. Now I did mention that I saw some clip art the other day that I fell in love with, so I'm gonna go ahead and search specifically for those. So now that we have our clip art, the first thing that we need to do is download this image as a PNG file. In order to do that, we slide on over to the top right hand corner, we go to share, and we go to download. We select PNG. So now that we have the image saved, our next step is going to be to go to PNG to SVG.com. When you go to that site, it's going to look something like this. You can see the little sand baby with his fist, and they took that image and converted it into an SVG file. So scrolling down a little bit, you're going to see a drag and drop your file here, and then you're going to see a checkered background here. So we're just going to go ahead and drop our file in, and here is our pup. One of the cool things about this software is you can change how many colors the program is reading. So we can tell just by looking at this file that there's not five colors here. We have the black outline, the white sheet, and then the brown dog himself. So at max, there should only be three colors. So we're going to go ahead and take out some of these colors. Now that we have our dog generated, we're going to go ahead and download that SVG file. Now let's test out the second SVG converter. We're going to go to svgconverter.com. Since we're taking a PNG image and convert it into an SVG file, we're going to go ahead and select that option. As you can see, it's asking us to upload our image or we can do my favorite, which is just drag and drop. Once we get to this screen, we just download the file. Now to show you guys how these results come out, I'm going to go ahead and pop open Cricut Design Space as well as Illustrator so we can take a further look. So comparing our two files, on the left we have the PNG to SVG, and then on the right we have the SVG converter. For the left one, it did a really good job at keeping those colors together. As you can see, we only have three layers here. But one thing that I did notice is when you hide the white and the black, our brown layer looks kind of chaotic. So we would need to go through and make some adjustments to this. So for this particular file, it's actually really easy to make those adjustments. If we select the brown layer and we go into contour, we can actually pull out the, the ear pieces, the nose, the paws, and hide everything else that's in there. Selecting this, we'll go to contour, we'll do hide everything, and we'll slowly just pull in the different areas that we want to keep. As you can see, there's a lot of lines and stray little areas throughout this layer that we don't really need. So that's one thing to keep in mind when it comes to those online converters that there might be some cleaning up that you need to do. So for the SVG converter, the first thing that I noticed is it didn't group similar colors together. So the biggest thing that I noticed with the SVG converter, it kind of created a layer for every single shape. I'm going to duplicate this and then ungroup one of these so that we can start pulling apart the different pieces. So it looks like our white ghost sheet did come out rather good and it looks like we have the black layers. I'm not seeing anything like in our first one where there's a bunch of different teeny tiny little cuts. 
So while the SVG converter didn't exactly import the most gracefully, it did only take a few minutes of adjustments in order to get us down to the same three layers that our PNG to SVG converter got. So the biggest telltale is what we're going to see inside of Illustrator. So SVG files contain nodes. A node is a pinpoint that lets the program know exactly where to go. The fewer nodes that you have inside of a file, the less time that it takes to cut. When a file contains an insane amount of nodes, it can really bog down your machine and sometimes it can stall out in the middle of a cut or it can go really weird. So I've opened both of these files up inside of Illustrator as you can see here and I actually have the exact node count for you. So taking a look at the PNG to SVG converter one, um, we actually end up with just under 2000 nodes. Now a lot of these came from that one brown layer. If you remember back in Cricut Design Space, the brown layer ended up having a bunch of random areas that we hid with the contour feature. Now, because I wanna do a fair comparison, I did go ahead and edit this design. I took out all of the extra stragglers that we removed with the contour feature inside of Cricut Design Space. I went ahead and took those out in this program to get a fair comparison for the amount of nodes that we actually ended up getting to remove. It did take our brown layer from over 1300 to under 200. So making those adjustments inside of Cricut Design Space saved us a lot of nodes. Now taking a look at SVG Converter, I went ahead and made the exact same edits that I did inside of Cricut Design Space. Again, just trying to compare apples to apples and give you guys the actual results. So after making those adjustments, the nodes ended up being 574 for the SVG Converter dog. Our white layer had 74, our brown layer had 159, and our black layer had 370. So after making the adjustments and comparing the files, we're kind of down to the same ballpark. Now I did say at the beginning of the video that I had another way to do all of this inside of Canva. If you have the Canva Pro account, you can actually download the SVG. So opening up our Halloween dog, we're gonna go ahead and download this as an SVG file by going to share, download, selecting SVG from the drop down menu, selecting transparent background so we don't even have to take anything out, and we're gonna download this to our desktop. I'm going to open this file inside of Adobe Illustrator, and we're gonna do the exact same node count so I can show you guys the difference. So comparing our three Halloween dogs, to me, it kind of feels like one of them is already coming out on top. Before I say it, you let me know down in the comments below which one you think it is. So comparing the two converters, I really liked how on the SVG to PNG converter, we were able to select the colors before we even got started. And once we downloaded the file, all of those color layers were already attached together. For the svgconverter.com, I did like that once we downloaded the file, the node count alone was significantly better than the other one. So now that we've got the pros out of the way, let's take a look at the cons. The SVG converter, I did not like that once the file was downloaded, there was a lot of different layers. Plus it was kind of a pain in the butt to have to pick different layers, slice them out, to kind of get the same three layers that we had with the PNG to SVG.com file. Now with the SVG to PNG.com file, I didn't like that there was a bunch of extra pieces around that brown layer and who knows what it would look like on the next file. I didn't like all of those straggler kind of things, but it was easy enough to hide it inside of Cricut Design Space. So while I loved how low the no count was on svgconverter.com, I gotta give it up to PNG to SVG Converter. The fact that you can select how many colors you're looking for at the beginning of the project and all of those colors come in on the exact same layers is amazing. It's certainly worth taking a look at. So if you guys are looking for a recommendation on SVG converters, definitely check out PNG to SVG.com. And if you're looking to get some more practice, I'll actually meet you in this video here. We're gonna take a coloring book image and we're gonna turn it into an awesome illustration inside of Cricut Design Space.